Hey guys, it's me, Greg Bossen. How are you? I am speaking to you from a rather uncomfortable position as I'm having some problems with my back. Um, I hear that happens as we age, and I'm not happy about it. Anyway, uh, welcome to Quick Tips for August 2013, uh, where we try and make your life at least with QuickBooks, easier. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is transferring funds uh, from one bank account to another. And this isn't a real hard thing. It's just something that a lot of people get confused about. So I want to talk to you about it. So I'm going to open up the chart of accounts here. And by the way, I'm using uh, QuickBooks Accountant Edition 2013. But the thing I'm going to teach is available regardless of what year you have, regardless of whether you have Pro or the Mac version or online or whatever. Okay. So what we're talking about here is this company here, we have two bank accounts. We have checking and we have a savings. So let's say you transfer funds from one account to the other. Okay. How do you enter that fact into QuickBooks? Well, depends. Uh, depends on whether you're writing a check or not. If sometimes you actually literally write a check, and we're going to talk about that first. Um, so let's say you're going to write a check. Say you're transferring funds from the checking to the savings account, so you're going to write a check. Anytime you're writing a check, you're using one of those pieces of paper, you need to write a check in QuickBooks. Actually, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to click Write Checks, and I'm going to show you, listen carefully, I'm going to show you the wrong way to record the transfer of a fund transfer funds. Okay? I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it. Transfer of a funds. I don't know what that means. I'm going to show you the wrong way to transfer funds. So we're writing a check. We'll point it to cash or maybe to the name of the bank or it maybe to the name of your own organization. It doesn't really matter what you put here. And then let's say we want to transfer, I don't know, $5,000 to the savings account. Uh, actually, 4500 you don't want to go crazy. All right. So here's where people get confused. And I'm going to show you the wrong choice. Okay. It's like, well, I'm writing a check. I don't know what expense account to put it to. Uh, I'll just put it to miscellaneous. People do this all the time. Or they'll put it to that weird account called Ask My Accountant. Basically, they won't know where to point this to because it's a transfer. So they'll just stick it to miscellaneous. Uh, so that's the wrong way of doing it. I'm going to save and close. Okay. Now we'll go back to the little chart of accounts list. I don't know why it disappeared, but uh, there's the checking account. It's gone down by the 4,500. But the savings account doesn't have the fact that the money has been transferred into it. So it's like, well, I make the savings account go up by doing a deposit. So here is the finishing of the wrong way of doing it. So person will go into the make deposit window and they'll record the deposit of the $4,500. Uh, the payment method was check. You know, they'll put the check number, whatever it was. I don't remember. Didn't really matter. Uh, but the point is here, the account that you got to point it to, again, they get confused. It's like, well, depositing it into the savings account because it was a restricted donation from an individual. So it's an individual donation. So I'll just stick it here. Okay. This is wrong. Okay. Because you already entered the income when you originally deposited into the checking account. You don't want to point it to an income account again, but this is wrong. I'm doing it wrong anyway, so I can show you. The person who does this thinks, well, everything's fine now. The checking account's gone down by the 4500 The savings account's going up by 4500 so everything is perfect. No problemo. Well, let me show you a problemo. When you go to look at a profit and loss, what's going to happen is first you're going to have this weird expense. Here's $4,500 right here. And I'll double click on it, and you can see that's that check that we entered for $4,500. Is it really an expense of the organization? No. So it shouldn't be on the P&L. On the other side of the equation, when you deposited the money and you put it to individual contributions, that $4,500, I'll double click, is going to appear down here. Here's the $4,500 deposit that we made. I'll double click on it right here. There it is, $4,500 going into the savings account. Now we have already entered the $4,500 up here. Okay, When we originally got the money, 
on the first of the month. Now we're entering it in income over again on the 12th, so now your income is doubled. So what we have on a P&L is we have income too high by 4500 and we have total expenses too high by 4500 The net at the bottom seems to be okay, but still your income's too high, your expenses are too high. So this is the wrong way of handling it. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to delete this all together. Edit. Delete. Then I'm going to go over to the miscellaneous and tell you what the dealio is. If you are transferring funds by using a check, you're literally writing a check from one account to the other, which is what we're doing here. You do everything like I, like I showed you before here, but down here in the account area, it wants you to put it to an expensive account. You don't do that. Guess what account you point it to? The other bank account, the savings account. What that's going to do is it's going to make that when you enter the check, it's going to make the checking account go down. It's going to make the savings account go up. Okay? This effectively will record the check and the deposit. So in, when you, if you're doing transferring funds correctly, you should only be entering one transaction, not two. Okay? So we're writing a check. We're lowering the bank account. We're increasing the savings account. I'm going to click Save and Close. Great. So now when we go back here, you'll see that now the P&L doesn't have that miscellaneous. It also doesn't have the income in individual contributions. But don't worry, the bank accounts are fine. The checking account has gone down by 4500 which I guess it's somewhere up here. There it is. There's the 4500 right there. And I won't look at it, but the savings account has also gone up by 4500 Okay. Now, there's only one more little thing i got to say. Many times you don't transfer funds by writing a check. But if you transfer funds by writing a check, that's how you do it. You just write a check, point it to the other account. Don't have to enter a deposit. But many times you don't write a check. Instead, what do you do? You either call the bank and have them transfer the funds, or more likely these days you go online and transfer the funds yourself. If you do that and you're not writing a check, how do you enter it? QuickBooks has this little tool under banking. Do you see it? transfer funds and I will click it and this is the window where you would enter funds that were transferred via a phone call or on the internet you pick the bank account you're transferring out of will transfer out of the savings account and the account we're transferring into the checking account will transfer back twenty four hundred dollars okay now, if you do it online, they probably give you a confirmation number, which you can type right here, and you click Save and Close. And that's all it does. You see how the checking account and the savings account changed? Because we moved money out of the checking back, or out of the savings back into the savings, uh, back into the checking. None of this stuff appears on the p and I'm done. Now, I'm going on vacation. <laughs> So if you have any questions about this, keep it to yourself. Uh, I will be back at the end of August. Have a good rest of the month.